get to the bottom of what's truly healthy in this crazy, complex world. So you can take back what is rightfully yours. Welcome to the Health Sovereign Podcast. This is your host, Logan Christopher. Hello and welcome. Doing something slightly different for this interview. My friend Josh Mason of the Detox Dudes is here with me today. But first, Josh has an amazing story. A health transformation. A night and day difference. Health transformation very powerful story and he's created an amazing video that shares this story in this podcast here i'm going to pull the audio from this video but i do recommend you go actually watch the video itself you can go to healthsovereign.com 40 that's four zero in order to find the video embedded there or you can also find it at josh's site thedetoxdudes.com we're going to start with this story You're going to hear what Josh went through, how he got to where he is today, and then we'll be diving into the interview portion. As you might get from the name, the Detox Dudes, we're talking about detox, and that's what this story is largely about. We touch on some other subjects, but the more I've gotten into health, where I'm at right now, is a strong, strong recognition that detox is so important and it's under understood, it's underutilized in our society today. And there's so many great things we can do to really support this. The truth is you cannot have health sovereignty if you don't understand detox, if your body is not detoxing well. It's that important. So let's dive in. Here's Josh's story. Imagine you're a child and it's a cold, wet, rainy day in an empty theme park, completely empty, and your parents and your family abandon you. And there's no way out of the theme park. You're locked in that theme park. That's literally what I felt like every single day. I was a pretty normal kid, normal normal dude, you know, I was living in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, I was 23 years old when it all started, and um, I was pretty successful in the conventional reality and what people consider success. I was a jiu-jitsu world champion, I had a cool girlfriend, I was living in an expensive apartment in, in New York City, and working cool corporate jobs, and basically I got completely, completely devastatingly ill. You were just living your life normally and then one day what? I'll never forget, I was in my dad's uh, office. He owns a window uh, and glass company. And I was like, I was putting butyl in an insulated unit. Butyl is like this liquid rubber basically that you put in between a unit. And I was shooting the butyl and all of a sudden, it was like I was like disassociating from my body. And like all, all that I once knew or all that I thought I knew disappeared in those moments. It was like, it was like a drug, like I was on drugs, you know? The only way I could describe it is like a bad weed trip that I had once had times 10 without, take, without smoking weed. So the fact that I didn't ingest any chemicals was like, wow, I'm going fucking, like, I'm going crazy. And that led into, and, and that led into, that led into these, and what happened next were just, I was just getting tormenting thoughts. Like I remember thinking the first time I've ever thought of that thought in my life was like, it's like, go kill yourself, Josh. And that thought arose in my head, like, you know, a couple minutes after feeling weird. And I was just, after I thought that, I was just like, oh my God, I just had a suicidal thought. And I free, it just spiraled out of control into a panic attack. And from that moment on, for three and a half years, I never regained my center. I never regained my center from that moment on when I was shooting that butyl. Uh, for three and a half years, I completely lost my sense of self. There's no way of understanding what that's like, but imagine I couldn't leave my bedroom. I, leaving my bedroom felt like I was going to climb Mount Everest. It was like I was so scared of talking to another human being. I, was, I thought that if I revealed my sickness to anyone truthfully, that I would be institutionalized. It was like, I, not only did I, was I dealing with my sickness, but I had to deal with the fact that I knew what everyone else was thinking about me, which led me to hide a lot. 
because if people truly knew what I was going through, I felt that I would be put in an institution. And, and, and I was always afraid that I would be put in outside of my will, you know? My first step was a psychiatrist. You know, I went to the psychiatrist, told him a little small window of what I was experiencing, because again, I felt if I told him everything, he would just like be like, all right, dude, you know, we're sorry, we gotta, we gotta lock you up, you know? I told him a small window, and um, they put me on a bunch of different medications. Zoloft, Latuda, Trazodone, three or four others too. And I started taking these pills and I felt something turn off in my brain. I literally felt like, like I felt this numbness creep in. Like this, just this weird, creepy numbness. It felt like I was a, a body of meat floating around. There were no emotions, no love, no care, no tenderness, no compassion, no empathy. Just, a, I was literally just a body floating around, like existing. So there's no desire, nothing. Nothing, no sex drive, no nothing, no desire for anything. Greasy foods and television, that's what I what is drawn to. Was there anything in you enjoying that as well? There was a little bit of comfort in uh, being a victim to the illness. Yeah. There was a little bit of, oh, I have bipolar and, and severe depressive disorder. I could just take these pills and, and, and nobody could blame me for the rest of my life. And I can just eat this food and I can get fat and I can do whatever the fuck I want and just be lazy as hell. And there was a little bit of like, uh, there was a little bit of a release there. Like, like, oh, life could just be this. You know, like there was a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. You know, there was a little bit there. And what, what part of you was like, no, fuck this? Me, every other part of me, the real me was, was, was like, fuck no. It wouldn't have been possible for me to do that. Right. I, was, I was a victorious kind of guy, you know, like I, I won a lot of tournaments. I, I was a world-class Warcraft player before I was a, a world-class Jiu-Jitsu practitioner and competition and winning was just like, it was like in my blood, you know? So you felt it's a... It's a... I felt I was losing. I felt I was losing. Right. So what did you try during your hmm. healing? I tried ketamine injections, obviously all the psychiatric drugs, mushrooms, a lot of mushroom ceremonies, uh, ayahuasca, colonics, enemas, coffee enemas, parasite protocols, meditations, vipassana meditations, guided meditations, yoga, breath work, fasting, Juice fasting, water fasting, float tanks. Did it work? Nothing did. What do you mean nothing worked? It didn't help at all? It was like... All of those things I was doing was allowing me to not kill myself. There was no joy, there was no, there was no peace, there was panic, anxiety, depression, and it was just swimming, just swimming enough so that I didn't kill myself through all of those modalities. Some of them would give me 10 minutes of relief, you know, like a float tank, I would generally feel like, okay, for about 10 minutes, you know, before I would spiral out of control again. It's super frustrating after trying all of that. Is this where you were like? I hated, I hated God. Right. I straight up hated, I hated God. I, I couldn't, I didn't believe it was possible to that there was a God, or that there was spirituality, or that there was... I felt, in those days, honestly, that it was my role on this planet to suffer eternally. Like, as if, it, like Gollum from Lord of the Rings, how he's possessed by the, the ring, I felt that, that I had a curse on me that I couldn't clear, that I was meant to suffer that I was meant to be tortured, and somehow that was my role. That was who I was. That's Josh Mason, and he just, he's here to suffer. And, and somehow it's bettering the planet with him suffering like this. There were so many times during my journey when I would literally be on the floor begging, begging for peace. Like, 
not the kind of like victim-y, like, please help me, God, please. It was like a full body, like, you motherfucker, I fucking gave you every last drop of fucking energy. Do you see what I'm doing? I spent my whole fucking bank account. I fuck do everything with integrity. I do everything full force, every meditation, every yoga. I bring my whole fucking essence to it. I'm not fucking around. I'm not going through the motions with these practices. I'm fucking doing everything, concentrating on my breath every minute, every second I'm concentrating on my breath. And I would look up and at the sky and just say, fuck you, like fuck you, seriously. At the end of my story, when I was really close to killing myself, I would swim out in, my, in Miami. I would swim out to sea when there was no lifeguards as far out as I possibly could until I started really getting exhausted. And my goal was that I would hope a shark would eat me. See, I thought I broke. I thought I broke a lot of times. Like I thought I broke when I would you know, swim out in the ocean. I thought I broke when I would stand up you know, towards the moon, I would always look at the moon, you know, that was like something I can connect to in the sky and just say, what the fuck, you know? I thought I was broken during those events. There was one time when it was actually true. One time. When I broke so hard that I couldn't, I didn't even scream. I didn't even, I didn't even, I just said, I literally just said, you won. It's over, you won. I'm going to my I'm going to Africa for Iboga. This is my last chance. After this, goodbye. I gave it my I gave it my everything. I didn't even shed a tear. Cuz I was done. I was done. There was no more space for tears. I was done. I somehow, I somehow re-engaged my, my will. Um, I don't know how I did it. I, I, uh, I broke down to my family and I told them that they needed to believe in me and that I needed help. I needed unconditional help. I had no money left. I had no will left. I was broken. It was like, okay, I accepted that it was my last chance on earth. And in accepting that it was my last chance on earth, money became a joke. Money became pixels on a screen. And because of that, I looked at my body and said, what? is possibly wrong with my body because if I, if I can change it for less than $25,000, I'll change it. I looked at every body part, every surgery I ever had. I had stitches here, I had a surgery on my a hernia and I, I would look at everything and say, what, what is possibly wrong right now? What, what is infected? What is wrong? And then I looked at my teeth. And I would just dream about it, think about it all day, all day, touch them, look at them in the mirror. Just like, fuck, man, maybe I should get rid of these things before I go to Africa. You know, I really think I should get rid of these things. Nah, nah, it's expensive. It's a waste of money. Nah, I don't know. I really think I should get rid of these things. Booked an appointment right then and there, you know, without reading, without reading anything on the Internet, because wow. I had already heard of it before. Right. Somehow, somewhere I read Mercury is not good. We read them and we ignore them, yeah, totally. Yeah. They're not affecting me. Yeah, I'm a jiu-jitsu world champion, fuck that. That's yeah. not affecting me, you know? Yeah. Then I got them taken out, taken them out. It wasn't until I got them taken out, and I, I remember, then I Googled mercury poisoning stories. Yeah. It was like the first thing that came up. It was 
the first time I had ever read any other account to this level of torture and suffering. Word for word, pulled out of my mouth. Recently completed experiments now reveal how mercury causes brain neuron degeneration. With direct visual evidence from brain neuron tissue cultures, how mercury ions actually alter the cell membrane structure of developing neurons. The neurite membrane underwent rapid degeneration, leaving behind the denuded neurofibrils seen here. It interferes with the way the brain works. It interferes with the way your motor works. So you end up with some neurological or motor or thought process that gets fried, because that's what mercury does. It destroys nerves. What you're seeing is mercury vapor coming off a 25-year-old silver amalgam filling in an extracted tooth. The background is a phosphorescent screen. The mercury vapor absorbs the fluorescent light, and you can see it as a shadow on the screen. What we've discovered is that every time you do anything to the filling, whether you chew on it or brush it or chew gum or you know have a hot toddy or whatever, something that heats that filling up through friction or temperature makes it spew mercury vapor at levels that, you know, if it was a city, they would evacuate it. These are not small amounts of mercury. If you can see it, it's more than 1,000 times higher than the Environmental Protection Agency will allow for the air that we breathe. I was both sad that I had to give life another chance because I had already checked out and happy that I would maybe, maybe found my answer to my life. I read tons of information on the internet and I realized it wasn't just my mercury fillings. It was everywhere. Seafood, vaccinations, and even fluorescent light bulbs. And it wasn't just mercury. I learned that there are heavy metals and chemicals everywhere, even in the tap water. At this point, I had read enough. I needed to learn how to clean this stuff out of my body and I wanted to do it fast. I began taking seven, eight, maybe 10 things for my gut. Aloe vera, butyric acid, glutamine, tons of bone broth, and many other things. I felt like for the first time I was feeding myself and not feeding this disease, feeding this curse. Fuck you, Mercury, you have no chance. Then I started taking gut binders, things like charcoal, clay, zeolite, that became part of my morning concoction. And these act like a giant vacuum grabbing onto toxicity in the body. They truly are lifesavers. Eventually, a couple of months in, life began flowing through me again. I was having a resurrection and I was watching it live in action. I was watching TV and in my normal cycle, this, this torturous cycle and anxiety and feeling like I was like all in my head and just like, just like static energy all around me. And all of a sudden, I would look, I looked at my hands. I looked at my arms. I felt my heart beating. It was like I had seen my hands for the first time in four years. Cause when you're in the, when you're in a panic, you can't actually see what's right there. There's no presence. There's nothing, it's just, you're, it's invisible. You're, you're lost in the thought, you're, everything else is invisible. To see my hand again, to feel my heart, my hands, I was just, I, I was like, oh my God. I remember, literally, I remember sitting up, like putting the TV on mute and just being like, what happened to me these past four years? Like, where did I fucking go? I would say after like nine months is when I felt like it was like, like I was here again, living on this earth. Already for a year, I've been better than I've ever been. I believe that my suffering has led to who I am now, which I would never want to give up for a million years. I would, I would do it. I don't know if I would do it all over again, but, but I'm happy 
that it happened already and it's done. Welcome, Josh. Good to have you here. Thank you, Logan. Pleasure to be here. So that is quite a story. And it, to me, it's an extremely inspiring story. The, the like worst off, I mean, look at our movies, right? The, you have that uh, dark night of the soul. And in, in a movie, you know, it's shortened down to hours, but for you, it was years, right? And Almost this amazing journey. And I, I really like how you said at the end, like, I, I wouldn't, I love the transformation that's occurred, but I wouldn't want to go through it again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so a couple questions on that. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that happened then? Uh, you mentioned like you were laying down rubber or something. Why was that the trigger that suddenly sent you into that? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was using this butyl machine uh, at my dad's office. Um, in New York where I was basically like gluing together with this rubber substance, two pieces of glass. And I don't know if that had anything to do with it. I I think that, um, why did it happen then? That's like one of the best questions I've ever been asked. (laughs) I have, I have no, clearly there's going to be some toxic chemicals. Is that just like the straw that broke the camel's back? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If that was, contributing factor it was it was the straw that broke the camel's back after years of seafood and other toxins and other things and also on a spiritual level like i believe that our breakdowns happen at at a particular time where we we have all of the resources we need to handle it we have every you know the universe god gives us these these breakdowns the beginning of our metamorphosis at a time where it knows that, that we can handle it. Like I remember five years, six years prior to that moment, I was uh, at university uh, of Maryland and I started experiencing depression when I first, when I was a freshman at university of Maryland, it was like this mm-hmm. huge, scary world. And I remember that the same portals that opened in full when I was 23, they began to open when I was 18, like the little parts of those dark portals opened up and, you know, I was able to close them, you know, and had they opened up in that w- in mm. full at 18, I never would have had the resources or the, the, the in, inner knowing or anything to, to be able to get through it. Right. So I feel like it happens spiritually at a, a time and a place in an age where you can handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's more of an esoteric answer, though. Yeah. No, but <laughs> yeah. it, it's good. Like just the other week, I, I hurt my back working out, which is an extremely rare thing for me to hurt myself. Just kind of a freak thing. But it was, and it was my low back, and everyone's had low back pain at some point, right? It's, it's pretty crippling, and this wasn't super bad or anything like that. But it was interesting because it was coming up at this point where, like, I needed to ease back off work and give myself a break and do a transition thing. So it's. I like immediately because I practice this stuff, right? Gone, went into the reframe, you know, what's this about emotionally, mentally, spiritually, Mm -hmm. even Mm -hmm. uh, not just thinking like, ah, crap, you know, I hurt my back and I'm sort of that sort of of stance. Yeah. Yeah. So another question off that, it's really interesting. The, the point you got to where you're like, what's wrong with my body? You're looking around and you end up staring at your teeth and Mm -hmm. seeing the the mercury fillings in there. Uh, could you expound on that really? Because you had done so much, so many things through how, I guess, looking back, how did that never occur to you before? <laughs> or yeah. uh, wh- why did it occur to you then? You know, it did occur to me in the past. Like I had r- actually read articles of, mm-hmm. of people being poisoned by mercury, of fillings being bad for you. And the thing is, in, the, in that moment, the, for this couple year period of time, when I was drinking ayahuasca and working with plant medicines and uh, you know, herbs and deet and cleaning my colon, doing enemas, fasting. I had developed this attitude of like, I 
like spirit conquers all, right? Like if I, th- it, I developed this attitude of essentially like, if I say this mercury is not toxic, it's not toxic. Like there's no way that this thing in my teeth could be poisoning me to that degree. Like this is surely a shamanic initiation. This is surely a, um, bigger than any chemical or substance. Mm. That's because the level of torture was so intense, right? So I had, I had given it some energy and I was like, nah, no way, no way. This this is not possible. And furthermore, I had read that removing them is like three, four, six, five, sometimes six, $7,000. And I was like, well, I don't have that money. Why even go down this path? Why even, there's no way I could possibly get rid of them, even if they were um, crippling. And, And that's the interesting thing, right? Because when push came to shove, I found that money, right? Like I just, I put it on a credit card, right? Once I realized. Oh, it was a matter of life or death at the end. Once is, and that's the thing about money, right? Like everyone says I can't afford it. No, actually it's just not a priority, right? As soon as something becomes a priority where it's your life is in jeopardy, like nothing matters. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the short answer to that question is, is, um, I had given it a little bit of energy. I had heard about it and read about it. It wasn't until I was at my wits end where I was like, this is, this is all that's left that I haven't explored yet. There has to be something here to this mercury substance. And I had heard another woman's story about it. And when I read her story and saw the level of suffering that mercury can, can um, cause, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is what I'm going through. This is what it is. You know, this is one of the answers, right? Because it right. wasn't like I found mercury and then everything changed. There's a lot of other substances to, to have detoxed out of my body. And there's a lot of spiritual work and, you know, and deep emotional work that has gone into my becoming whole again, right? I, right. M- removing mercury is... That was like a pivot point, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So that that's like you were to that point, you hit rock bottom... I'm going to kill myself if this doesn't work literally yeah. like can't be yes. much more rock bottom going to yeah. give this a shot. It worked. And that's where things started to turn around for you. Exactly. But yeah, I, I think it's important. People, there's still this idea, you know, of like one cause for one disease or there, there's always one thing, but it's really just layers and layers and different totally. stuff. And you touched on it there, that, that idea spirit conquers all and think like maybe possibly if you can be, you know, super duper, hyper spiritual like maybe that that is possible but you know we live in a physical reality so i like to look at health on those those different aspects i used to call them levels but that does connote a like a hierarchy Mm -hmm. um when really it's just you know different perspectives so like the physical the mental the emotional the energetic the spiritual and really if we're looking at things for here like that pivot point there was the mercury that was something physical you had to take care of, but there really was all this other stuff too. And it was all layered together. Oh, exactly. Um, totally. Yeah. I'm curious for the, the, the people that come to you and work with you, how many of them, how many times have you heard? I've tried everything. I have heard that so yeah. often, Logan, yeah. probably. And those are all, those are always my best clients. Those are my favorite clients to to take on. The clients who write me a four page email who say, this is all that I've done. Mm -hmm. You know, transcranial magnetic stimulation, every diet, this diet, this supplement, that supplement, hyperbaric oxygen, stem cells, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, great, you know? Um, So, so I would say about, you know, 33% of people that maybe 40% of people that contact me are just serious, serious health warriors. Like people who really have gone down the rabbit hole, who have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and um, still haven't been able to, to move the needle for themselves, mm-hmm. you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's because I, I, I too hear that a lot and it's interesting, like what, no one has tried everything, right? There's, there's oh, so many there's modalities out there. So much. Yeah. A, a lot of stuff. And I, I can understand getting to that frustration point where nothing seems to work. But I think that is part of the journey, right? It's a no matter what, you keep trying things until it's, you get there. It's so true. Like you keep on knocking on the doors. Mm-hmm. You just, you have to have this relentless tenacity inside. If you think like, I remember at several points of my journey where I was like, I've done it all. There's nothing else out there. I've, I've drank the ayahuasca. I, I was about to go do Iboga. I did a lot of San Pedro and mushrooms and fasting and um, 
water fasting, juice fasting, colonics, enemas, like there's no other way to clean this body. There's nothing else to explore. I've figured out everything that could possibly be wrong with a human body. And the, 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 the fact that I believed that to be true mm-hmm. when I was two, three years into this journey and seeing how far I've come in the past four years, three right. years since then, the thousand new modalities things I've done <laughs> and how, how much, hundreds of thousands of new dollars that I've spent on my health to continue and, and explored. And now I'm doing a round of 40 hyperbaric oxygen treatments in Marin. And it's like, like just, and I've done stem cells. I've done exosomes. I, I have all these contraptions and electron machine and a juve red light. And it's like, Oh, I really thought that I was at the end. Like you had scratched I, the surface. I figured it all out. Like, and I'm broken and unrepairable. Like that's, that's a joke. And if anyone's in that frame, even if you've gone for 20 years searching, mm-hmm. just know that like the, the, the way out is to keep knocking on doors, you know, to keep like, there's other things. What about structural issues, postural issues? And, and there's so many amazing healers on the planet, Logan, and you're one of them, right? There's, there's people who, who have mastered little niches and little categories and people who have mastered the whole body and mastered. There's so many geniuses in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And for you to like get stuck in that thought pattern because of your suffering and be like, it's over. I, I, I can't find anything else. Like, you're closing yourself off to the hundreds of thousands of geniuses out there who have figured something out. Right. Right. So, yeah. 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 And another thing that's helpful on that, because like you were, you were locked into, Oh, this is a a spiritual battle. This is a spiritual thing. Right. So you were looking, Oh, the the plant medicines or the fungi medicines, whatever this is, that's, what's going to fix it. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think for people that are on this journey, you want to not only keep knocking on doors, but, try to strive for very different doors, you know, so that you're saying like the structural thing. Okay. Let me go to an energy healer. Let me go see a psychic. Let me talk to a shaman. Oh, let's, yeah. All these different things. Let me try different diets. The, because our problems, we might be locked into thinking of just one way of thinking and trying a bunch of things there that is far from trying everything, right? That's just trying the same thing over and over again. And one example would be, you know, conventional medicine. That works great for some things and it really sucks for a lot of other things, right? So just going to doctor after doctor won't necessarily help many of the issues that doctors aren't great at. Yes. I'm going to give you an exact example of that, Logan. I, for years, focused on detox, mm-hmm. spirituality, meditation, and that, and, and that was like the, the bulk of it, right? I learned about upper cervical chiropractic where they actually check your atlas and your axis and make sure that it's not out of alignment because when the atlas or the axis is out of alignment, it compresses the brain stem Mm -hmm. and the brain stem of course is connected to your whole body. And it's, it's like, um, it's like a circuit breaker when the atlas is out of alignment. And I was a fighter for, I was a wrestler for five years and a jujitsu fighter for five years. I had been grappling using my neck for 10 years. Right. And I had gotten a lot in a lot of fights on the streets. I had a lot of head injuries. So I learned about this upper cervical chiropractic and had my upper cervical adjusted many, many times. And it was like, it was like, Oh, like this is the way the circuitry is supposed to be. Like it wasn't all of this spiritual thing of me needing to witness my thoughts more or Mm -hmm. me needing to detox more mercury. Actually just my Atlas needed to be put in back in place. Right. And it's this, this biochemical magnetic system all of a sudden worked better right Mm -hmm. so so yeah yeah Yeah. that's an example right of just seeing finding a magic key that changes everything right yeah so a question this is leading there right you've you've detoxed right you you've cleaned up the crap you've been doing this for years and of course there are more layers always to be done but i i feel most people only get into health after they've hit some sort of rock bottom, may not be rock bottom, but after, you know, the doctor says you have some problem uh, and people start going up against this, usually it happens when they're older. Most people don't pay attention to health before then. But to me, well, one thing is most people have a, a health is ill-defined. Health is to most people being free of or absent of disease, but really health to me is more about adaptability, being able to handle more and more stressors and uh, thriving from that. So, so much of this health, uh, continual experiment, 
adaptation of different modalities is to continue to thrive, right? It's not just healing problems mm-hmm. that exist, right? Yes. Uh, is that your experience that you're just continuing along this path because I guess there's like enjoyment and you continue to get more out of it? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, this is like a machine that requires constant maintenance, right? I, the, the way I've experienced healing and my life is that as I continue to advance, as I continue to ascend and my consciousness gets higher and my physical body feels better and um, everything gets more solid and, and grounded, what I've experienced is that, you know, there's this immense, uh, I think the right word is um, dichotomy where it's like the more clear and vibrant you get, the more sensitive you get as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so there's so much work to do in maintaining the vehicle. When, when, when you put so much energy into your, your vehicle, it becomes like a Porsche, right? Right. It becomes like a Porsche instead of a Honda and it requires the expensive gasoline and it requires (laughs) so much upkeep and so much energy and time. And like the parts are really expensive when they break. Right. So, so there's this thing of like being, I, I, I've actually become more sensitive and, um, and so, so again, there's that, there's that challenge there of how do I navigate in a world that's so toxic while my whole life is around detox and clarity and purity, right. And cleaning. So, um, and now that's exactly where I'm at, where I, I, I love figuring out how to become better, how to, how to reduce inflammation systemically, how to be feeling good in my body on a regular basis, how to be mentally clear and connected right? So yeah, at this point, it's become more a game of upkeep and thriving and ascending as opposed to like, I'm broken, fix me. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it's just, it's actually more fun. See, Mm -hmm. once I got out of survival, then it actually became like a game and I became a tinkerer, like you, just like you, an alchemist, right? This herb and that herb, and let's figure out all the different combinations and concoctions, Mm -hmm. right? And that, and that, um, that's fun. That's fun for me at least. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Especially when like getting one of those breakthroughs, like I'm at, at this stage, right? Like a, a 1% improvement, those little fine things, mostly that's what you get, but there's still those occasional, like, like you had with the, the structural uh, manipulation yeah. there, uh, game changers, right? If, and if you can hit one, one of those, like every five years, that's amazing. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. So I, I do want to dive deeper into the topic of detox because sure. it's it's so important. As I've understood health more over the many years I've been involved in this, I feel this is such a neglected spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, for instance, I, I on my coaching program, I have an application there. And one of the things I, I do is ask people to rate uh, a certain health area on a scale of one to 10, like their movement, their diet, supplementation, and I have a detox eliminations. And what I found people answering this is they don't even know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> but for the most part, they think it's just about poop, uh, yeah. which is fine. That's an important aspect, but there, there's really so much more in there. And so people don't even have like a, a frame to really think about detoxing. Uh, yeah. So can you describe like wh- why detox is so important and sure. in working with your clients, like, uh, I know some of the people come to you and d- detox isn't as important of an element, perhaps, um, right. or something that may be more of a spiritual journey, whatever else. Uh, so, but what do you see as far, like, how many people does everyone need to support their detox systems? Yeah, great question. So, I've, I've learned about detox in my personal experience. It started with pure and simple colon detox, right? Mm -hmm. This is where most people start. They hear detox and it's like, oh, like you clean your, you clean your colon, right? Mm -hmm. Or, or maybe that's might even be a little more advanced. Most people may be like, all right, I'll eat salad for a week and then (laughs) that's a detox, right? And like, Mm -hmm. that's the extent. And maybe they would put it together that that equals more poop, right? Like to clean the poop in the colon, right? So that's probably where most people start right? Or they go to the store and they buy a detox supplement that in essence makes you poop, right? So, so that's again, where, mo- where most people begin, right? And, and that's where I began. And I learned that, wait a minute, I can drink juice for 12 days and go to the bathroom 
and have a bowel movement every day, potentially twice a day, where is it coming from? That doesn't make any sense. Where is this coming from? And that's when I explored Daniel Reed, the Tao of Health, Sex, and Longevity, and uh, uh, other colon books, Richard Anderson, Dr. Richard Anderson, uh, about cleaning the colon, cleanse and purify thyself. And I learned that most people's colon has five to 10 to even 12 pounds and some overweight people way more Mm -hmm. of old rotting fecal matter that undigested fecal matter that is a result of sitting in chairs all day is a result of overeating a result of uh, incorrect food combining a result of not chewing our food thoroughly of stress of sit, even simply sitting on a toilet. You know, we do that wrong. We, the way you sit on a toilet like this, this is audio only, you won't be able to see me, but you can imagine yourself on a toilet. It actually doesn't align your rectum with your large uh, intestine, with right. your, right? So um, lifting your feet up or squatting is, is a much better way to, to go to the bathroom. So there's all of these things that we're doing incorrectly that basically lead to clogging of the pipes right? Mm -hmm. To put it simply. And I had spent years working on my clogged pipes and worked on it very, very diligently. And it, it moved the needle a little bit. I felt more connected to the divine. I was able to access higher spiritual places. I had more energy, but, um, there was another layer, right? So the new layers that I learned about from that point forward, which people rarely explore, is things like cleansing and purging the liver and gallbladder of of stones, of things like removing heavy metals and uh, plastics and chemicals and fertilizers, insecticides, fungicides from the organs and tissues of the body, from the blood, right? Mm -hmm. Most, uh, Most substances that we, most toxic substances, they actually settle into safe zones like the kidneys and the liver and the brain. And people would say, well, how is it? Why would it go? Why would your body put mercury in the brain? Because it's way more toxic when it's in the blood, mm. right? It's, it, it's way more detrimental when it's floating around in the blood, right? So, so the next tier of detox that I learned about was again, this, this refined, removal of substances from the organs and the tissues and the muscles and the fat mm-hmm. and of course sweating right yep. sweating is a avenue of detox that you, you look at cultures you know finnish uh norwegian cultures that use saunas on a regular basis in iceland and they have way lower cases of heart disease of cancers because regular sweating is incredibly effective at, at boosting the immune system, removing toxicity and, and keeping up with the flow, right. Of, of toxins into toxins out. So my answer to, um, to, does everybody need detox? I believe that everyone at, I believe that there are some people that can totally handle what's going down on the planet. They are just resilient I'm the opposite. I'm a canary in the coal mine. Mm. They would be whatever the opposite of a canary in the coal mine is. <laughs> a robust <laughs> coal miner. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, and, and, and they, you know, I know a friend who is 40 years old and he's been drinking beer every day of his life, every day for the past 20 years. And he does jujitsu every day and he smokes weed and he eats whatever he wants. And he's probably healthier than me, <laughs> like, <laughs> never had an issue in his life. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and how am I going to tell that dude to like get healthier? Right. And even my ex-girlfriend who, uh, is super, super healthy, you know, she was able to eat whatever she wanted. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, I would say the majority of the population, if you are, if you are not thriving, detox is important. Mm-hmm. Even if you are thriving, what happens is that one hits their body burden point. What the, this, this bizarre time. Thing, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a bizarre thing that happens where all of a sudden in a couple week period of time, things just change. Mm-hmm. You just go from being super, super healthy to like, whoa, what just happened? Right. It's like oftentimes I've observed this body burden shift where again, they just, someone shifts into like illness rather quickly. 
yeah. right? And that's because they've been ignoring all of the micro symptoms, right? Up until that point. Right. Um, so that, that's a long answer to your question. Yeah, but. no, it, it's good. Uh, I, I got the kind of the image of, uh, I like to try to think in terms of fractals because that's how nature works. So there's like the, the whole organism detox and we see that simply as like urinating and defecating, right? Mm -hmm. That's the main things, but sweating in there as well would be a, a main system. And an important thing to, about sweating for me is that that's a way that your body removes not just water soluble toxins, but fat soluble toxins, exactly. uh, which is really important because otherwise the, the colon is the other way that that happens. And if stuff is backed up, it's probably not removing much there. Exactly. But then we can go down, uh, zoom in into the different organ levels, right? And see that each one of these, there may be, you know, some like the kidneys, the liver are more directly involved in the detox, exactly. but really literally every organ within the body. And then we can zoom in even further down to the cellular level. Yes. You know, what's the ability of the cell, the membrane to be able to absorb the right kind of nutrients, get rid of waste, that sort of material. So I think that's a useful way to think about it. You can start big, but then begin to narrow it down over time. Yes, beautiful. And, and down to the cellular level, what m many people in the detox world don't, don't realize is that the reason we accumulate toxicity is, cause, is because we're mineral deficient oftentimes. Mm. So when there's mineral deficiencies, the body will pull in a metal or a toxic substance because it's hungry for something, right? right? When we're selenium deficient and you consume mercury, the cell will actually pull in mercury instead of selenium. Mm -hmm. When someone has ample reserves of selenium, they're going to uh, uh, retain less mercury. Right. right? So um, Fluorine and chlorine if you don't have the exactly, iodine there. Exactly. Right. Exactly. All of the halogens. Right. Um, so, so on a cellular level, when we detox, we also have to replenish minerals. When I use this word detox and my business is called the detox dudes, right? But the truth is that there's so much more to the game. You have to replenish minerals. You have to constantly be bringing in the good things into your system as you remove the bad stuff, right? Yep. Otherwise it doesn't work. You become stripped mm -hmm. and you become devoid of, of, of everything. Right. I think the, the cycles, there's like detoxing, then uh, rebuilding or supporting, right? And those, those go exactly. together. And again, it's kind of fractal. We can think of just the food and water we consume and that goes out or down to the cellular level, the, the minerals and the, the toxins that are involved. And I, another important point is the human produ body produces its own toxins, right? Like we are detoxing, whether we're supporting it or not, that's something that's necessary for life yeah. to function. So it's not a matter of like, is it happening or not, but are, are we supporting those processes? Exactly. And it's all about intake and outtake. That really, to me, like if you narrowed health down, it's about intake and outtake. And this happens on all levels. Food coming in, food going out. Minerals mm -hmm. coming in, minerals going out. You know, spiritual lessons coming in. Yes. <laughs> lessons going yes. out. It's, yeah. it's, it's all across the, the yes. different aspects of it. It's all about that like a function in mathematics, right? right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> absolutely. So I, I guess let's, let's narrow it down a little further into detox. What are some of the like most use? I know there's a wide variety of things because we're talking about one chemical, there's going to be something that's best for helping to detox that. But what are some of maybe your, your top tips or tricks or supplements that uh, work for a lot of people that maybe people aren't aware of? Um, yeah. 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 One of my, the, I would say if we just started with the core, core, core things that everybody should do, number one, changing one's water, right? The water we drink is, becomes our blood, becomes our blood. It's so powerful to change and, and transform your water. People spend $10,000 to go to a Tony Robbins seminar before they change their water. What? <laughs> Like I love Tony Robbins, but change your water before you spend 10 grand on Tony Robbins. You know what I mean? Like, There's nothing more foundational than what I've, I've been thinking about that. Like the basics of the basics of water and breath. If you, yes. if you don't get those right, those are really easy to get right. Yes. Uh, but without the right knowledge, it's very hard to get right. <laughs> yes. And breath is not that easy these days with COVID and, <laughs> and right. all of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, so water, um, you know, me and Logan used to live 
10 minutes away from each other in Bonnie Doon. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if you want people to know where That's you fine. live. No. You can edit that out. <laughs> but, um, but we used to live uh, 10 minutes away from each other and there's a spring there. Okay. Mm. The best water on earth to drink. And that's the water I drink every day, all day when I live there is spring water, water that comes from an aquifer deep within the earth that can take hundreds of years to come back up to the surface, sometimes thousands of years to come back up to the surface. And it gets filtered through the earth. You're, you have minerals, you have life force, chi, and, um, and this water is pure and clean, clear, high energy water. That's my favorite water to drink, right? Distilled water I also love. One can purchase a distiller for like 500 bucks and never have to get water again, and never have to pay for water again. Um, you can distill tap water. Well water is also good in Bonnie Dune. There's a lot of wells. I lived on a well when I was in Bonnie Dune. Um, and um, um, so RO water is also pretty good. Reverse osmosis, high level filters are good. But the worst water to be drinking is municipal tap water, right? So most people in the pl- on the planet, especially in the United States, which is one of the worst countries in the world for 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 toxins in water. Um, why? Well, because we deliberately put it in there, right? <laughs> so, so we put, uh, halogens, we put chlorine in, in our water to filter it. Right. And there's pharmaceutical drugs in our water. So we're one of the highest users of pharmaceutical drugs in the world. Pharmaceutical drugs get metabolized. They, when we pee it out, it's very, very, very small particles and the municipal filters cannot filter this out, right? right? So we're left with pharmaceutical drugs. You've done a write-up on this, I believe, pharmaceutical drugs in urine, right? Yeah. In, in tap water. I've, I've gone into it. Yeah, and what an uh, interesting thing, like the, in order to have the effects on the body, these drugs are designed to be biopersistent, to be not broken down easily, right? So they, they pass through the body exactly. and yeah, they're, they're going to exist in the environment, some of them for very, very, very long times. Yes, yes. And, and so, of course you know, we're, we're, we're left with this, these pharmaceutical drugs in our water. So you're getting a dose of Xanax, a dose of Klonopin, a dose of homeopathic dose, (laughs) homeopathic doses, right. Of these pharmaceutical drugs. So there's also viruses and bacteria and all kinds of stuff in the tap water. So we remove the tap water. We bring in the best two waters, in my opinion, distilled water and natural spring water. And that is a game changer. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next step is for someone to drink 16 to 32 ounces of juice every day. Mm. You buy a $200 juicer, the Omega J8006, and you start getting celery and lemon and cucumber and ginger and green apple and parsley and making a green juice every single day. It takes seven minutes to make, five minutes to clean up. And you, th- I drink 32 ounces of juice every single day. This is going to bring minerals in, raw life force in it's going to help with evacuation it's going to help with cleaning it's going to help with detoxifying the liver and the water and the juice you can if someone has never done these two things they'll observe massive massive changes in their life right Mm -hmm. so those are the two core basic things right and of course breath right breath is instrumental i mean it's we can't 60, you know, 120 seconds without breath, we can live many days without water, many days without food. But right. So, um, uh, I'm sure you'd have a lot to say about breath and breathing techniques and clean air and all of that. But, um, after that, um, the basic, the next basic level is to do colon detox and colon detox. Um, I like trifla at night. You're taking these three Ayurvedic uh, herbs that help gently detoxify the colon. I like magnesium glyconate and um, uh, I like boldo tea. And those three are my, the typical things that I use at night to, to uh, gently flush the bowels. Magnesium oxide is another thing to gently flush the bowels the following day. And, um, and then some cool supplements that are really important, in my opinion, for, for most people on the planet are things like iodine. Okay. So Global Healing Center makes an amazing iodine. You can put it directly on the thyroid. You can take it internally. It's very strong stuff. Uh, liposomal glutathione, gl- glutathione being the master antioxidant. 
Um, I like sulfur, MSM. I really think sulfur is important for the, for the system and also moves the needle for, for many, many people. Um, and I would say that would be a starting point. The water, the juice, the three supplements I recommended, and of course, biohacking one's sleep, right? And I actually don't even like the term biohacking, but just improving one's sleep, mm-hmm. unplugging the router, uh, not sleeping with your cell phone next to your head. Um, you can go as far as me and get one of those canopies that you, oh, you can't see it on the call, but that's a silver canopy that I sleep that blocks out all EMFs, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, um, and really just like beginning to, to get rid of screens using blue light blocking glasses, all of these, these basic things to, to start improving one's sleep because sleep is the magical zone where all the, everything happens, right? right. If we're not sleeping, sleep, you improve everything. Here's what I've learned through this process of four years of torture. If you're not sleeping or pooping, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I, so I wanted to ask about clays because this mm-hmm. is one thing I haven't gotten a super clear answer on. So most clays like zeolite, for instance, uh, have these great reputations for pulling toxins out of the body, yet they're made up of aluminum, which mm-hmm. is a, a light metal, and there's definitely problems with aluminum. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, can you explain yeah, this? What's your experience, sure. knowledge around this topic? So, so thank you, because that would be the very next step after those five things that I talked about. The very next step would essentially be to introduce binders. Binders are negatively charged substances that are sometimes man-made and they're sometimes uh, found in nature. Sometimes they're a combination. Mm -hmm. Uh, And what they are is they're like vacuums. They go into the body and they're like uh, negatively charged vacuums that grab onto positively charged pollutants and allow for evacuation, right? So you don't digest these substances. They typically just run through you like a vacuum. And um, there's some life-changing binders out there, clay being one of them. Some bi- other binders are like activated charcoal, bamboo, car- coconut charcoal, bamboo charcoal, citrus pectin um, uh, from the crustacean, uh, the shellfish. Um, you can get chitosan right? Which is another binder. Um, some silica products are other binders, zeolites, zeolites and clays are very similar. And there are such thing as toxic zeolites and toxic clays where these clays are actually high in lead and aluminum and, um, and they can be detrimental over the long haul. What I've learned and so I've, I've read some papers and I read some studies and I read some research but I've also taken clays for literally six years, right? Yeah. And, and my levels of aluminum and lead are very, very low. So what I've basically gathered through my own experience and through some reading is that, of course, one wants to buy the best products. And I, I've done my research and found the you know, uh, low lead, low aluminum clays and, and zeolites, BioPure being an incredible company, by the way. Um, for both of those, um, is that uh, most of the lead and aluminum in a binder actually doesn't get absorbed into the body Mm -hmm. because it's connected to the binder, right? It's in the binder and your body is not going to take it out of the binder and not going to digest it and metabolize it. So again, I always view binders as this vacuum that grabs other particles, not quite not quite getting digested. So if it has tons of lead and tons of aluminum, I think it would be a problem over the long haul. Um, but you know, BioPure even puts horsetail in their zeolites, silica binding to aluminum. Mm. Right. So that's one way around the problem. Overall, I've experienced binders to be life changing for and and here so here's another example of of experience being more valuable than than research, right? right? I've had clients come to me with five, 10 years of full-blown panic attacks, heart palpitations, feeling like they, their, their nerves are f- like uh, uh, being fried and feeling like their nerves are on fire. They take binders for two weeks and literally the symptoms can, can vanish. That's how powerful binders are. That's how powerful metals are. When metals are in the gut, 
breaking through the leaky gut, crossing the blood brain barrier and just causing systemic hell for people. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful and detrimental metals can be for people. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, that, that's yeah. a good answer and uh, mirrors some of my own thoughts, but a little more developed. So thank you for that. Yeah. I got notes all over here. Yeah. Um, how does fasting fit in? So yeah, I, I've done a fair amount of fasting. Uh, for me, it seems like different so everything you just talked about, right? Different components are going to help detox certain things. Certain stuff have affinity for one metal uh, versus other things may have affinity for chemicals. And then with fasting, we have juice fast, we have dry fast, we have water fast, all these different types. And I think this goes back to our starting discussion, like all these different modalities, right? So there's all these different detox options. Yeah. I guess my question is where does fasting fit into this? And, um, any more detail on how one should approach this large topic of detox? I, we gave some of the foundational early easy wow. steps, but uh, how should then one expand this over time? Sure. Fasting is a, is a technology. It's a beautiful, beautiful technology that I used uh, a lot in my years. Um, water fasting, juice fasting. Um, I never have done dry fasting, though I've heard amazing things about it. In my opinion, Fasting is a bit of an obsolete technology. So I do think that, that uh, intermittent fasting is great. I think that fasting a day a week to give the digestive system a break is great. But this concept of doing 10, 20, 30, 40 day fasts to, um, to heal the body, in my opinion, is obsolete technology. And, and I'll share with you the pros and cons of it. All right. So let's take an extreme of like 20, 30 day fasts. This is extremely depleting for the body. What the teachings of health and detox 30, 40 years ago, for instance, Daniel Reed, an excellent uh, resource, uh, we were way less toxic as a collective back then. Mm -hmm. If you look at rates of autism, if you look at the nutrients in soil, right, the soil degradation from um, never allowing land to rest from monocropped farms where we have one crop across an entire farm stripping minerals. The same minerals come out, the same minerals come out. There's no ecosystem. There's no permaculture. It's all you just, just devoid. It's devoid of life force. It's, there was a study or I don't know if it was a study or some paper I read. I don't know exactly what it was, but basically a carrot today is like one twentieth of a carrot 30 years ago in right. terms of its nutrient content. Right. So, so fasting, water fasting is depleting the body of more electrolytes of more minerals. And it, yes, it causes autolysis autophagy, uh, which is basically where the body cannibalizes anything that doesn't serve it, mm -hmm. but it's stripping the body of minerals of nutrients. I've seen people get worse on fasts though. Of course they really can spiritually connect right? Um, through this fasting process, connect to God. I was thinking there like a, a longer fast is probably most more a, a spiritual thing than a health it is. thing, right? It is. Yeah. It's an incredible spiritual experience. And I do think that, you know, everyone should, should give it a shot three, four, five day fast um, to recognize how much they rely on food and how dumbed down their system is from, you know, from food. Um, but all in all, I've observed that it's obsolete technology because we have so many incredible supplements and so many mach machines and modalities that can kick toxins out while replenishing the body at mm -hmm. the same time and can, um, uh, can just, it, fasting is like a pendulum, right? We're, we're living this way of life and then we fast everything, all of our food is gone and then when we're done with the fast, I've observed this pendulum effect where we like, like a slingshot where we like come back to like overeating and like, give me more, give me more. Right. And so, um, overall fasting does serve a purpose, but in my years of doing this, I've, I've learned that it's, it can cause more harm than good. And it's depleting to an already depleted body. Mm. We are as a collective depleted of minerals, of electrolytes, of life force. 
and I don't think we need more depletion. Um, I think we need building, we need like juices and minerals and, and uh, it's a big, big subject, but the short answer there, uh, it was a long answer, but the, the just trying <laughs> to keep it concise is that it, it's good. It has incredible benefits. I've observed other things to be more mm. uh, powerful and uh, complete technologies. Mm. And um, so, um, yeah. Um, as far as the grand picture of detox, this becomes a way of life, right? Mm. So taking herbs, sweating, doing the detox, it becomes a way of life instead of just a quick fix or a one week trial, right? right? And it becomes a multi-year journey, but it doesn't have to be so much work or so much money. It's, it's just when you start feeling the results from cleaning this vessel, you'll never want to go back to, to not, you know, detoxing again. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can ask me a more specific question yeah. if you'd like on that subject, but yeah. No, that's useful. And that's how I think of it too. Thank you for that perspective on fasting. That's fascinating. I'm going to have to reflect on that some more. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's the, the building in the, the habits, the routines that help support the detox on just a daily basis where it's not a hassle where you're doing just certain things that, because as you were saying, things can both be like supporting and building and detoxing at the same time. And ultimately, I think that's most of what we need because of the environment we find yes. ourselves in. And then there's a time and a place for a, a more extreme, if you will, detox a, a longer time period, throwing the, the bigger guns into the yes. mess. Um, but the more you can style your life to have the, the gently supporting detox, the less you have a need for that exactly. sort of thing. Exactly. But then hopefully also the, you cultivate awareness along the way so that then you, you can bring out those bigger guns as needed. I, I wanted to ask about the testing for, let's say, heavy metals. Uh, mm -hmm. I know there's different forms of testing, urine, hair analysis. I've gotten my hair tested two times. This was a few years ago and then quite a few years ago. Both times I had really high arsenic. Okay. Uh, and I never really figured out what that was from. I didn't seem to have any of the symptoms of arsenic poisoning. Uh, so yeah, your, your thoughts on testing what works eat well rice? and what should I do for my arsenic levels? Assuming they <laughs> actually are sky high. <laughs> do, do you eat rice? Um, I, I do eat rice. Most of it's organic and like, uh, comes from the USA versus I know that's a bigger problem with, uh, Chinese rice. Um, so I, I don't, I don't eat so much of it that I think that's the issue. Uh, um, but I, I could be wrong. That was one thing that I thought maybe that's that, but yeah, yeah. So as far as tests, um, there's a lot of different tests. Um, here's the, what I'll first say. What I'll first say is that I believe a detox should be done no matter what test results come back because of how inaccurate these tests can sometimes be. And it can, sometimes tests can change from week to week. Um, I've done a lot of different tests and I've observed that, you know, hey, I don't know how how perfect this test is, right? So, so better to do the, the detox of some form, see if you get better, then rely on exactly. testing before now. Do the experiment, even if it's a few hundred dollars, like I'm not just saying this to conveniently get more clients, right? And conveniently like make my business more uh, in demand, right? The truth of the matter is that I've seen people with no levels of mercury on their tests get, and no, no levels of aluminum on their tests get from chelation. And I've seen people with mega levels of metals on their, on their tests who are perfectly healthy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, the, again, the experience and it comes down to that storage in the body versus it being circulating, right? Cause pretty can, much. if everything stays in your brain, nothing's coming out in the urine or the hair, then it's, it's in the brain and maybe causing the problem there versus maybe you have none in the brain, but it's just circulating. Yeah. Precisely. So the tests are, Urine tests, urine, there's urine tests where you just straight up urinate, and those are very, very low level. The best tests are when you take a urine challenge test. So you take a chelator, mm. and you take this oral chelator, which provokes chelation, and then you, you urinate. There's hair tests, which are pretty good, 
Um, there's also oligo scans where they actually check your finger and there's a in, inside your blood in your finger, they can check your levels of minerals and metals. Those are pretty good too. They all have their pros and cons. They, you know, so I, I encourage everybody to check it out. Um, it's rare to get false highs. It's more, way more common to get false lows. Right. Um, and Hey, so you're saying testing isn't accurate. I wonder if that has any applications to do. <laughs> well, it does. Yeah. Yeah. That's the part two. We'll do COVID uh, PCR tests. <laughs> yeah. All right. Didn't mean to put you up there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Ted, did, did you hear about the, the president who tested like a jackfruit and a papaya? <laughs> right. Right. Which came back positive. Yeah. I wrote. And then I heard he was, he, he died later. He got killed. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> No shenanigans going on. This is yeah. all straightforward. <laughs> yeah. So um, some amazing things to, to get rid of uh, that arsenic. You could take um, uh, cilantro, make juice with cilantro, yep. juice with wheatgrass. You can take EDTA uh, powder and you can even take EDTA in suppository form, which is more effective. My friend Spencer uh, makes EDTA suppositories. His company is called Remedy Link. Mm. I can send you a link if you'd like for that. Um, and um, those are good. It's very effective for other heavy metals as well. And um, that would pretty much, if you did that consistently, that would dramatically lower your arsenic levels. Um, and I don't know where else you'd be getting that from. It could be in the, it could have been, it can be in well water. Right. Yeah. So I've only uh, been here for a while. I did see a connection that crystal geyser spring, which, my family used to buy that. They like, dumped arsenic. It was high in arsenic. Yes. Um, so I think possibly that that was it. Yeah. The, and they're in Bonnie Dune, aren't they? Um, I think different part. They collect from different springs in California, oh. I believe. Oh. Yeah. They and they they got in trouble for dumping their arsenic. Did Did you know about that? Yeah, that may have been what I was doing. Was yeah. something related to the arsenic? Yeah. 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 Um. So well, let me ask: Is there it, does it really depend on like the, the person and what they may be doing, which test they should be getting or like, is there a most recommended test that should be applicable to most people? If you're not seriously ill, mm -hmm. I recommend the urine challenge test. Okay. That will be the most accurate. Okay. okay. Um, if, if one has serious symptoms, the urine challenge test is very dangerous because they are taking a strong chelator for 24 hours um, and, uh, well, sometimes you take one dose, sometimes you take dose spread out through 24 hours and chelating metals will dramatically, uh, exacerbate symptoms for, mm -hmm. for a wide range of people. So if you're okay and you're just like experiencing brain fog and this and fatigue and some slight depression, go ahead and do that urine challenge test. If you're in the world, like I was in panic heart palpitations, serious anxiety, stay away from the urine challenge test, do a hair test, do an oligo scan and, uh, and check that and check those out first. Yeah. Nice. Quicksilver makes a, a try test for mercury. Quicksilver mercury try test is, is would also be, be good. good. Um, that's specifically for mercury, which in my opinion, mercury and aluminum are the most sinister metals. Right. If you can take care that of we have the most exposure of basically. what's that that we have the most exposure of, right? Not only That's that, yeah. but how intensely they affect us. Mm. Yeah. So if you want to focus on the most important things, it would be mercury and aluminum. Mm. No. Well, yeah. Josh, well, I feel like we could keep going for hours and ah, hours. We could, we could. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll definitely do this again, but, yeah. uh, Tell people a little bit about your site and your work and if people want to follow up with you and get more info. Sure. My website is thedetoxdudes.com and um, has everything on there. My YouTube channel is The Detox Dudes. Instagram is at Detox Dudes. Um, and I offer tons of free information. I have so much stuff on my website. If you are a beginner, you're, this part sparks your interest. Your soul is like listening right now and you're like, yeah, there's something here. There's something here. Go to my site. I teach you every step of the way for free. And if you want more support, I sell a course, um, a master class that I sell, a 40 video series. And I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do retreats, retreats all over the world. My last retreat was in Hawaii. 
I've been all over the world with retreats and uh, yeah, I'm very, very passionate about this world and of detox and health and biohacking and, and would love to support you in any way I can. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Josh. I think people will find this useful. There'll be a whole bunch of show notes, the link to the the video, because you get, you got to watch Josh's story links to the website, everything over at healthsovereign.com slash 40. Thanks everyone for listening. Thank you, Logan.